Hallelujah. Amen. That's the rise to our feet. And I want you to just lift up your hands unto the Lord. And just take a moment of time to just welcome Him and to just praise Him and honor Him. Hallelujah. Shikiyanda Sanda. Oh Lord, we love you. Shikiyanda Sanda. Hallelujah. We worship you this morning, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the blood that you shed for us. Hallelujah. Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Sandai. Oh Lord, we love you. She la 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 rando. We thank you. Yes, we could sing of your love forever. Hallelujah. The anda karaba Sunday. Anda karaba ba 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 Sunday. Ida rado korobo. Hallelujah. Over the mountains and the sea, your river runs with love for me. And I will open up my heart, let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth, so I will gladly lift my hands. And I will always sing when your love comes down. I could sing of your love forever. 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 Over the mountains and See, your river runs with love for me, and I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to believe the truth. I will gladly lift my hands, and I will always sing when your love comes down. Would you lift up your hands and sing? I could sing of your love. Forever, 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 over the mountains and the sea, your river with love for me and I, I will open, open up my heart, heart let the healer set me free I'm happy to be in the truth so I will gladly lift my hands and I will always sing when your love come down I could sing of your love forever I could sing I could sing of your love forever. I could sing. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. Yes, we could. I could sing of your love forever. Hallelujah. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. Over the mountains and the sea, your river runs with love for me. And I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth, so I will gladly lift my hands. And all of you and your love come down. I could sing of your love 
forever. Would you sing? I could sing. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. Hallelujah. Let's give him a big clap this morning. Shalalalarando. We worship you. Riba ma 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 robo. I believe in Jesus. I believe. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you believe in Jesus? Yes. Sing amen. Hallelujah. I believe in Jesus. I believe. I believe in Jesus. I believe that is true. And love will set me free. I believe in Jesus. I believe. I believe. Hallelujah. I believe the Father sent His Son to forgive the sins of everyone. And true faith is love will rescue me. And his light will shine eternally. I believe in Jesus. Hallelujah. I believe in Jesus. I believe. I believe in Jesus. I believe. That is truth. That is truth. And love will set me free. I believe. Jesus, I believe. I believe the Father sent His Son. I believe the Father sent His Son to forgive the sins of everyone. And true faith, His love will rescue me. And His light will shine eternally. I will shout, sing this morning. I will shout, shout, sing. Jesus is my King. I will praise His name forever. I will shout, sing. I will shout, shout, sing. Jesus is my King. I will praise His name. Forever, come to the water, come to the waters. All who are thirsty, drink from the well. Hallelujah! Drink from the well of life. Come taste the cup of His love and mercy. Draw from the living Christ. The well is deep. Hallelujah! The well is deep. The river is wide. His love and mercy. His love and mercy, pure and true. And it will flow from mountain high, reaching from heaven to me and you. Come to the waters. Come to the waters. All who are thirsty. Drink from the well of life, hallelujah. Drink from the well of life. Come day the cup of His love and mercy. Draw from the living Christ. The stream of life, the stream of life is endless and pure. The river man. Are overflowing, and it will run, and it will run from mountain high, keeping the valley ever growing. Come to the water, come to the waters, all who are thirsty, drink from the well of life. Come taste the cup of 
His love and mercy draw from the living Christ. 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 Lord, Lord, we love you this morning. Hallelujah. Yes, we're listening this morning. Shakaraba Sanda. I'm listening to the new song from heaven. I'm wide awake this morning. I'm wide awake while waiting for you. While waiting for you. You're all I ever need. Hallelujah. You're all I ever need. I'm desperate without you. I'm desperate without you. I see your mercy, Lord. Hallelujah. I see your mercy. Lord, you are holy. I want to be more. You live your love this morning. Hallelujah. Teach me to live your love. Teach me to live your love. Help me to give your love. Help me to live your love. Show me your way. Show me your way. Lord, I will obey your word and live your love. Live your love. The song is hallelujah. I stand in awe. Grateful remembrance, grateful remembrance, press towards the goal, hallelujah. Press towards the goal, for the price I must win, for the price I must win. I got my eyes this morning, I got my eyes focused on you. Focus upon you. Show me your beauty. Show me your beauty, Lord. Is your goodness, Lord? Is your goodness that makes me more like you? Teach me to live your love, Hallelujah. Teach me to live your love. Help me to give. Help me to give. Your love. Show me your way, hallelujah. Show me your way, Lord. I obey your word and live your love. I'm listening to a new song from heaven. I'm wide awake, hallelujah. I'm wide awake while waiting for you, while waiting for you. You are all I ever need this morning. You're all I need. I'm desperate without you. I see your mercy, Lord. Hallelujah. I see your mercy. Lord, you are holy. I want to be more like you. Teach me to live your love. Hallelujah. Teach me to live your love. Teach me to live your love. Help me to give your love. Help me to give. Show me your way. Lord, I obey your word. And live your love. Teach me to live your love. Teach me to live your love. Help me to give your love. Show me your way. Lord, I obey your love. And live 
yalla teach me to live your love help me hallelujah help me to give your love show me your way lord i obey your word and live your love. Thank you, Jesus. Sarara ba 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 sanda karaba sanda. Your love. Hallelujah. Shalala ba 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 karaba sanda. Hala ba 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 sandi. Oh Lord, we worship you. Amen. If you have a prayer request, I uh, just want you to lift up your hands unto God as a sign of uh, surrender, a sign of humility. Uh, without God, uh, you cannot be on your own and you need God to help you. So you have a prayer request, just lift up your hands and we're going to pray. Father, we just want to thank you for this wonderful morning and Thank you for your presence among us. This morning, every hands that have been lifted up before you, a sign of uh, needing you, a sign of humility before you, that God, without you in our life, we cannot do anything. And Lord, whatever prayer requests your people may have this morning, and God, you know, hallelujah, even before they ask what they need, God, I pray that, God, uh, you would hear uh, cries of your people. You say in your word, you delight in the prayers of the upright, and you hear the prayers of the righteous. And, Lord, we come before you, bringing all the needs that are here and those who are watching live stream as well, be it for family, be it for health, be it for uh, work, be it for finances, whatever. Pray request, God, we pray uh, in your wisdom and in your will. God, we pray you answer your people. Lord, we bring our leaders in the fellowship before you, Pastor Great Mitchell, Joe Campbell, Ellen Asia, and all the rest of the pastors, their wives, their children, their family, their congregation, every disciple, worker, in the name of Jesus, set your age around all of us, we pray in the name of Jesus, our nation, our king, our government before you, in the name of Jesus, help them as they govern this nation, may it be, O oh God, according to your will, we pray, and this morning, hallelujah as well, we want to bring our loved ones who are not saved, and pray for their salvation, reach deep down into their heart, Lord, speak to their hearts, and even every uh, one who have backslidden, we pray for them. Bring them home to yourself, almighty God. And this morning, bless the service, the preaching of your word, the hearing of your word tonight. And this morning, in Christ's most wonderful name, we pray. Amen. Let's give a big clap to the Lord. Amen. You can turn around and greet one another. And uh, we do welcome you for this morning service. Amen. So glad to see all of you here this morning. A quick announcement uh, tonight. Um, we have uh, English Tamil service. Time being, the English Tamil service is moved from Saturday night to Sunday night at 7. So tonight will be uh, English Tamil and uh, meet with worship at service at 7 uh, p.m. And Friday, we have a Zoom prayer meeting. And uh, this coming Saturday morning at 9, there will be a, a WeBacks a men's meeting. So all the men who are, are here do tune in at 9 in the morning. This coming Saturday on the 30th, uh, there will be a men's WeBacks meeting of all the men in our fellowship uh, in, our, in our country. Amen. So before we uh, go to the Word of God, we want to uh, receive our tithes and offering. Amen. And the Bible tells us there's two trees 
uh, in the Garden of Eden. One tree is called the tree of life, and the other tree is called the tree of knowledge and good and evil. The tree of knowledge of good and evil belongs to God. Okay, the tree of life is supposed to be uh, Adam and Eve and to you and I, but it did not come to pass, and you know what happened. But anyway, the tree of knowledge and good and evil is God. God said, you don't touch it. It belongs to Him. Okay? But we found and we hear, unfortunately, Brother Adam, uh, he and his wife did not obey. He touched that tree. He ate up the fruit. And we know what happened. So tithes uh, is God's money. belongs to God and uh, it belongs to Him. So we want to come before Him and honor Him with what belongs to Him and also come before Him with our offering this morning. Let's bow our heads this morning. Amen. Holy and Father, as we come before you, God, uh, humble heart, uh, we thank you, Lord, for all your blessings that are upon us, God, in our life, Lord, abundant blessings. I have a prayer for us, God, our incomes and everything, oh God. We pray, uh, God, as we give to you uh, faithfully to your kingdom, our tithes and offering, God, bless each and everyone here, every giver, oh God, uh, oh Lord, and uh, thank you for all your grace and mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, <clears throat> I'd like you to turn with me to the children can follow Sister Juliet uh, upstairs. Uh, Luke 17, verse 26 to 30. The book of Luke, uh, chapter 17, verse 26 to 30. I read verse 26, you read verse 27, and we go down to verse number 30. Uh, of our text here in the book of Luke chapter 17. Okay, you could stand to your feet. And uh, Luke chapter 17 verse 26. And as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. Verse 27. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. Was twenty nine. Was thirty. Even so, will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed? Amen. You can be seated. Uh, the title for this uh, morning message is The Danger of Normal, N-O-R-M-A-L. The Danger of Normal. And in preparing this uh, for this morning message, uh, my mind went back to March 18, 2020. Uh, it was the day uh, also... Uh, I was discharged from Columbia Hospital. Okay, and on that day, March 18, 2020, uh, was the day the announcement was made by the government that because of C-19, COVID-19, the entire nation is going to go into a complete lockdown. Since then until now, we have experienced four lockdowns. Numerous sets of SOP and force in order to curb uh, this virus from spreading. And be in between, the former Prime Minister in one of his speech says that we have to adapt to the new way of life, calling it the new normal. The new normal will include uh, mask wearing everywhere you go. The new normal will also include social distancing, be it you sitting, queuing, walking, running, you know, gathering one meter apart. A new normal also include uh, working at home also, including also 
the way we greet one another, okay, uh, cannot touch one another, and uh, elbows and knees and knuckles. Uh, COVID-19 has changed much of the way of the normal to a new norm or call the new normal. Now, as I give thought to this, the question I ask myself is, is there a message in this new norm way of living that God is wanting us to learn in which the answer is yes. In the early months of COVID-19 in 2020, uh, some claim that COVID-19 would cease after August 2020. Some claim that they heard from God and uh, in uh, YouTube and WhatsApp, they begin to say that, you know, by August 2020, the, the, the what you call the graph was slide down and uh, COVID-19 would disappear but it's already now October 2021 and it's still actively spreading its tentacles uh, all over the world. This pandemic has swept the whole world. It's not just one nation thing but a worldwide thing and it has changed the way how Everybody normally live life or how normally we would do things. Again, is there a message? And the answer is again, yes. And if yes, what then is God trying to tell us this morning? Now, in our text here, we find Jesus speaking about his second coming. Okay, And he speak about his second coming twice. Once in the beginning, and the other time at the end of what he has to say. Verse 26, And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. Verse 30, Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. And as he spoke of it twice, he draws from Bible history what the world will be like when he comes, using two examples of time, both in the book of Genesis, the first being during the time of Noah, and the second being during the time of Lot, which both have one common aspect, and that is like those times, like his uh, coming, okay, second coming, it will be life as usual. Or it'll be like, it will be like any other normal day. When the Christ comes, life will be like any normal day. And that is people shall be going about eating, drinking, marrying, given in marriage, buying, selling, planting, and building. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day Noah entered into the ark. The flood came, destroyed them all. Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, you know, they did it. Now, Lot, he did not speak about uh, homosexual and all that, you know. Uh, he did not speak about that. But, you know, as we know, in Sodom, the main thing, problem there is Sodomites gays, homosexual, and all that. But he did not speak about that. But instead, he spoke about they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But the same day that Lord went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus it shall be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Eating, drinking, marrying, given in marriage, building, planting, buying. These acts were all normal, common, usual acts of life, as it is in all generations. Before the lockdown, that way was the normal way of living, just like during the days of Noah and Lot. But that kind of change after the lockdown or during the lockdown where, whereby we have the new norm way of life. 
But now it looks like the normal way of life is slowly coming back. But anyway, we were interrupted with a new norm way of lifestyle. And according to Jesus, it was during the normal, living life as usual, during the time that they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, buying, selling, planting, building, the flood came. The flood swept them all away. And also, during the normal, the fire, the brimstone, rain from heaven and destroy Sodom and all of them that were in Sodom, living life, going about, just being normal, and not having the new norm way of life was a big mistake for them. When the door was shut and the flood came, they were all swept away. When Lord went out from Sodom, fire and brimstone began to rain upon those who are still in Sodom. But two families escaped from being left behind. The family of Noah and the family of Lot. And the reason they escaped was because in the normal of life, in the norm of life, they added the new norm way of life. This family did spiritual social distancing. This family had their spiritual mask on. These two families abide by the new norm of spiritual living. And when the time came, one family enters into the ark and the other family escaped by the help of two angels that pulled them out from Sodom and thus saving them and their family from being destroyed. They escaped and escaped because while everyone was living and going about the normal, these two families include the new norm way of living their lifestyle. And again, is God trying to say something to us in this normal and in this new normal way of living in which I believe He is? And if God is, what then is He trying to say to you this morning or say to us this morning? Now, since Noah and Lord were both the men Jesus uses as an example of the new norm way of life, of when the time of his coming would be like, their way of life would be our reference to what is the new normal way of spiritual living in which in no one case, to understand that, we will have to go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse number 7, to find out. Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 7, has this to say, By faith, Noah been warned of God of things not seen as yet move with fear prepare an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became, became heir of the righteousness which is by faith now like everybody else Noah was also part of the normal. But one day, normality is just not good enough. Living life the usual is not just good enough. Now, a question need to ask here when reading about what is written here in Hebrews 11 verse 7 about Noah. And that question is, what is fear doing there in this chapter of faith? Because Hebrew 11 is known as a faith chapter, whereby all those who pleases God and have their names there are all by faith people, which, is, which also it is known as a hall of fame or faith chapter, chapter 11. But here we find the opposite of faith mentioned in verse 7 about Noah. And that is the word fear is there. And what is fear doing in this hall of fame of faith chapter. It says there in verse number 7 that Noah moved with fear. Okay, By faith, Noah been warned of God of things not as seen as yet, 
move with fear. Or in the King James Version says, move in godly fear. There's no doubt he has faith like everyone else. But in regarding to what was warned by God to him about the things not seen yet, he also moved with fear. That is, he moved with godly fear. The new norm way of life shall include for him moving with godly fear or moving in godly fear. It shall involve a whole new work of preparation that involved building an ark that would save him and his family. But from now, everything in regard to the normal for him shall include a new normal way of living. That is, that new normal way of living is moving in godly or with godly fear. Life for him, life for his wife, life for his three sons and three daughter-in-laws shall involve the new normal way of life or moving with godly fear. Now, the words there, move with fear, is the word to mean to act cautiously. Or there's this big word called circumspectly. Okay? There's no doubt that Noah is a man that revere God. He has deep reverence towards God, who is one who show high respect and awe towards God. Because in Genesis 6, verse 8 to 9, the scripture says, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. In verse number 9, it says, Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. Noah walked with God. And happy is the man who is always reverent. Proverbs 28, verse 14. So, on one part of the fear, there is this deep reverence towards God. There's this deep respect towards God. There's a deep awe towards uh, the living God. In every area of his life, he shows his respect in words, in positioning himself, during prayer, in time, and all. He has this deep reverence towards God, and therefore he was called a just man, perfect, earning him uh, finding grace in God's eye. The fear of reverence was already there, but this move in godly fear is, is the move in, uh, move in fear word called eula biomai, which is the word cautious and the circumspect kind. Circumspect has the meaning of an unwillingness to take the kind of risk which may cause harm or which may end you up losing. And in this case, the risk that can end you up losing your salvation, that is the word circumspect, okay, has that meaning. You're unwilling to take risks. You're unwilling to take a kind of action. You are, you are, you are unwilling to you know, um, make decisions that's going to involve harming you and ending you uh, losing your salvation. This word, you love your mind. This word, move in fear. is only mentioned twice in the Bible. The other time is in the book of Acts chapter 23, verse 10, in which can help us to understand what Noah move in fear looks like. Whereby, on Acts 23 is about a time uh, where Paul, uh, there's a possibility that Paul might be torn into pieces by the angry, grout, angry crowd that were there. And uh, what happened is that there was a commander looking at the situation, looking at where Paul was, looking at the situation whereby Paul could be torn into pieces by an angry crowd. And this commander who was there, he moved with fear. Fearing something bad could happen to Paul, what he did was he moved into action, commanding his soldiers to go down and to uh, bring Paul out from the crowd of people. It says in verse 10, Now when there arose a great dissension, the commander fearing, Okay. Here's the word, Yulo uh, Biomai, the, the commander fearing 
uh, the commander fearing lest Paul might be pulled to pieces by them, and then he commanded the soldiers to go down, take him by force uh, from among them, and bring him into the barracks. The word fearing is the same word uh, move with fear in regard to Noah. And what that word means again, a fear that causes you to act with caution. A fear that causes you to be circumspect. Okay? A fear that causes you to not take risks. Okay? When you look at the situation, there's a risk there. Okay? That you may lose your salvation. Okay? Be it you know, uh, before you, the things that you're looking at. Uh, be it in relationship. Be it in, uh, in things okay, there is before you. There's that risk. Okay? That you may... Because you take that action, you're going to fall. Okay? You're going to sin. You're going to lose your salvation. And circumspect means that and Noah moved with fear during his time. Okay? And this command of circumspect living was also given to the church of Ephesus, whereby uh, Paul began to say to the Christians there, Ephesians 5 verse 15, See then you walk circumspectly. Not as someone foolish, but someone wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. evil. Again, the commander, looking at the situation, saw that Paul could be torn to pieces, moved with fear for Paul, and in that fear for Paul, he took a course of action, commanding his soldiers, go and take him out from that uh, uh, crowd of people. The commander is in a way, is like a good watchman like we should, and properly observing, assessing the situation, and if seeing something is not right, move in godly fear, taking action in that fear. Was he worried? Yes, he was. Was he concerned about what is happening before him? Yes, he was. In which too, Noah was. After that, God warned him, uh, about the things that's going to come. Genesis 6.13 Noah was told by God what is the condition of the heart of man on earth, full of violence, bloodshed everywhere. And I could say like today, and God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. And what that would mean is he's going to live a life cautiously. He's going to live a life circumspectly. He's going to up his normal living life to a new norm way of life. He's going to draw, he's going to draw the line. Okay? There's going to be places he would not go. There's going to be people that he would not join himself to. He's going to draw the line. He's going to maintain a standard of righteous living. He's going to fix his eyes on Jesus, on that that can save him and save his family. The new norm way of life shall supersede the normal way of life and that he's going to focus on that which can save him. Not just save him, but save his family. And that is that which can save him and his family. It's the ark that they was building there. He's going to put all his effort, time and life, no turning back. The ark is the picture of Jesus. The ark is a picture of that which is going to save him when the day the waters from heaven above and the waters from ground beneath is going to break forth in the open for 40 days and 40 nights. And also... He's going to preach about the ark as well. Come what may, what people may say about him and his family. His new norm goal will also include trying to bring in as many as he can into this ark by preaching to them that the ark is their way. The only way for salvation, Jesus Christ is that ark. It's the only way. He's going to warn them about the flood. He's going to warn them about the second coming of Christ, about being left behind. And church likewise, 
This is how we are to live our lives, not just the norm. But also you must include the new norm way, just like Noah. And that is to live a life, move with godly fear life. Because rapture is coming and those who are left behind shall be swept away as it swept away all those who will not be part of the move in fear lifestyle. I once uh, decided that, you know what, I'm not going to uh, preach uh, uh, overseas involving flying. I have grew to dislike flying. Okay, because every time I fly, um, it's hard for me to sleep. It's, it's like very restless. So one time I told myself, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to uh, go and preach anywhere that involved me flying to some places. Until I read the words of Paul, woe unto you if you do not preach the gospel. I changed my mind after that. Okay, changed my mind. I said, God, Wherever you want me to go, okay, no matter how difficult the flight is, wherever you want me to go, I will go. Okay, I change my mind and I'll go wherever you want me to go. Move in fear means you become a Psalms chapter 1, verse 1 to 3 person. Blessed is the man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And his law doeth he meditate day and night. Move in a fear means, Psalms verse 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Move in. In a fear means you shall become an efficient 426 person. Be you angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. You can be angry, but you cannot sin. Move in fear means you can be disturbed about something, but you cannot sin. Move in fear means you become a Proverbs 21, 23 believer. You guard your mouth. You guard your tongues. You keep yourself, uh, you keep your guard over your mouth and tongue. Move in fear person means you pray prayers like David pray. Psalms 119 verse 37. Turn my eyes away from looking things that are worthless. Move in fear means your prayers open. Also, it's like Jesus pray. Forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Move in fear means also you pray like David prays. Have mercy on me, God. Forgive me of all my sins. You also pray Psalms 139 verse 23. Search me, O God. Move in fear means search me, O God. Know my heart. Try me and know my anxiety. It also means to pray Psalms 19. That the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh God, my strength, my redeemer. Move in fear means also you be like Joseph. When enticed, you flee, you run for your life. You move with godly fear. And you do that even if it takes 120 years. Because that was how long a Noah and his family moved in fear while building the ark. He preached 120 years. Though it took like 55 to 70 years to finish the ark, but for 120 years, this man, his wife, his children, his daughter-in-law, they move with godly fear. Even if it takes 120 years until the, day sh the door shut, and they were safe. So the first new norm way of life you need to add into your normal way of life is this way. Move with godly fear. Or look at secondly at Lord. To do that, we're going to turn to Second Peter chapter 2. Verse 4 to verse 7. Second Peter chapter 2. Verse 4 to 7. 
For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, cast them down to hell, and deliver them into chains of darkness. There are angels in hell that are chained in darkness. They're right now chained and they're in darkness to be reserved for judgment. And did not spare the ancient world, turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward will live ungodly and deliver righteous Lord, who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked. Verse 8, For that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Now, when Peter Call Lord righteous Lord, righteous soul, righteous man. This can be a bit, you know, confusing because of a number of things that Lord did. First, he had an argument and strife with his uncle Abraham, and he did not, being the youngest, he did not put a stop to it until. Uncle Abraham came to him and said, let's not fight, you know, um, let's not fight about all these things. Um, you go where you want to go, you pick where you want to go, and he picked Sodom. Okay. So secondly, he chose Sodom, which Sodom is a wicked uh, uh, city, and he yet chose Sodom. And another thing about him, when the angels... Uh, were in Sodom and the men came for, for the angels in his house. The Sodomites, he offered his two virgin daughters to them. So it doesn't look like, you know, it can be quite confusing reading that Lord is called righteous Lord, righteous man, righteous soul. But yet here, Peter refers him as righteous. Even righteous man. And even righteous soul. Okay. From what we read about his heart. And his heart is that he is troubled. The thing that makes this man righteous is that deep inside his heart, though he was living in Sodom, but his heart was not part of Sodom. Okay. He was troubled by the conduct of the wicked. The Bible says his soul was tormented. I read to you verse 8. For the righteous man, or verse 7, deliver righteous Lord who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked. Verse 8. For that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. His heart was troubled by the conduct, the behavior, you know, of the people that, he, that was around him by their wicked acts. Though Lord was separated from Abraham now in Sodom, tells us that his heart is one that's likened unto the heart of God in a way. God cup run over when he came down and see for himself the wickedness of Sodom, in which so disturbed him that he rained down fire and brimstone. And like Lord here, Lord was also oppressed. Lord was also disturbed. Lord was never a happy man there. Okay? Though he's someone important there, but his heart was always waxed by the things he see, by the things that's happening around him, by the things he hear. It disturbs him greatly. Okay? He was troubled by what he saw and by what is happening around him. A few days ago, Sister Juliet was sharing that um, in Hong Kong, they have a show. And it's organized by one of the main actors um, who is very popular. And uh, it's a show that match make gays with gays. 
matching, matchmaking one gay with another gay. And when I hear it, my heart, are you, you know. You get this. It's like, are you, what is happening? They are matching one gay with another gay. What is going on? What, what in the world? You, you, if you don't get disturbed, something is wrong. Okay. If you hear sin, if you see sin and it never disturbs you, it never bothers you. Lord, it bothers him. He sees this act happening there, happening, and it really disturbed him. And I believe for that reason, because he's disturbed by all this, in the eyes of God, okay, he believed in God, okay. God sees him as a righteous man. If sin disturbs you, God's angel shall pull you out when the day of Christ's second coming comes. If sin torments you, even if it's your own sin, if your own sin doesn't disturb you, there are, there are Christians called Christian sinners. If your sin doesn't disturb you, something is not right. Okay. Lord was called a righteous man. Righteous Lord, righteous soul is because deep inside him, he was not a happy man because he's disturbed by what he hears and what he sees. What about you? What about us? Because we find when God rained brimstone and fire upon Sodom, it was only this man, his wife, his two virgin daughters, they okay, escaped that city. So as I end this, move with godly fear. This is to be your new norm way of living. The new norm right now is going to go back slowly, slowly, like it's going to go back to the normal. Life is going to go back slowly to the normal. But like Noah, you cannot afford to go back to just the normal way of living. Move with godly fear. Be cautious. Don't take risks that involve you maybe losing your soul. Walk circumspectly. Okay. Preach Jesus. Preach about the ark. The only way that can save. The only way not to be left behind is the ark. Be troubled when you see sin happening. Amen. One area head bow, every eyes closed this morning. Hallelujah. The new normal. Could this be the reason why this pandemic is all over the world? There are many viruses that took place in Bible in history. The Spanish flu, I don't know, there are many, many, and many times those flu just take place like in one country. Like the one we have, SARS in Pock Dixon. Most of them happy, happens just within that nation, but this one is different. This one is all over the world. Even in the desert. Imagine, you read about in Saudi Arabia, oh, that place also got a, you know, it's, it's like, wow. That place was so hot. You could thought that the virus would die there because so hot, but it did not. It's still, it's all over the world. Could God be speaking? Could God be saying, I'm coming? Now, I don't know when he's coming, but Noah also didn't know when he's coming or when the 
when the flood was going to take place but 120 years he moved with fear and would you do that as well this morning and where you are this morning before God if God is speaking to you this morning convicting you today is the day of salvation talk to God and from today onwards I hear you God I'm going to order my life I'm going to put aside things that, that, that I need to put aside uh, two weeks ago I was talking to a man and he passed me his his phone number was app and um there's a picture of him as well in that WhatsApp number he passed to me and I didn't really took note of it because uh, I was asking him about something that, that he has, you know, and I was, I was thinking, yeah, it, it sounds interesting what he, ha you know, um, it was a service, it was like um, something to do with health things. So he says to me that it was helpful for him and so I told him, okay, can you pass me that number of the person who could um, offer this kind of health services? But then and I, took, I went home and he began to, he sent it to me and I didn't note, take note much of it until at night when I look at the picture and I look at the words there. And I say to myself, oh, oh, this is more than just health things. This is more than just, you know, giving health services this is something that has to do with spiritual. It's more than just help. There's spiritual things involved. I quickly deleted it. I asked God to forgive me. I quickly deleted it. I renounced it. I pray over it as quickly as I can. I pulled that name out from my WhatsApp group. I just took it out. Have it delete. Move with cautiousness, church. Hallelujah. Because everyone during the time of Noah were just going about the usual. They were not moving cautiously. And they missed the ark. Lord, I pray, God, for all of us that you help us to move with fear in these last days we're living in. And Lord, if our hearts are not troubled by what we see, Lord, like Lord, forgive us. Help us, Lord, when things are not right, we become troubled by it. We bring it before you in prayer. Even if it's, if it's our own self this morning Lord thank you for speaking to us we ask of your mercy in the name of Jesus Christ we pray Amen let's stand to our feet let's sing this song Lord my heart cries out glory to the King glory to the King my greatest love in life and you everything glory glory I hear the angels sing open my eyes Lord open my ears let me hear your voice to know that sweet sweet sound oh my soul rejoice Glory, glory, I hear the angels sing. You're the Father to the fatherless, the answer to my dreams. I see. In righteousness 
We cry glory to the King. Comfort e r to the lonely. Lift e r of my head. See you well. See you well in majesty. We cry glory. We cry glory, we cry glory, glory, we cry glory to the King. We cry glory, we cry glory, glory, we cry glory to the King. Amen. I just uh, pray for Jordan. Come, Jordan. Come. We pray for you. Jordan is not feeling well, so pray for him. Okay, he has a pain on his right, left, right side of his lung chest. So let's pray for him. Okay. Let's lift up your hands and pray for him, Father. You lift up your hands, son. Lift up your hands in the name of Jesus. Uh, take dominion and authority. Over this pain on the right side of his chest, by the blood of Jesus Christ, I cast out whatever infirmity and pain that's come upon him. Loose right now, you foul spirit, you leave my son. Take your hands off him. I pronounce healing and wholeness upon him in the name of Jesus. Command this area of his right side of his chest in Jesus' name. To be healed completely right now, in the name of Jesus, I bless my son, health and wholeness this morning. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Okay. So, amen. Anybody else need prayer before we dismiss? Amen. Then not go in the joy of the Lord and don't gather downstairs if you are downstairs. And uh, uh, God bless all of you. Amen.